Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to continue with the sales database and show you how to create a form. A form that is going to be an input form into a table. So just to recap, we've got three tables. We've got customers, products and sales. Then we did a couple of queries and a couple of reports. So first of all, when you've got a related database like this is, so if I just go into database tools and show you the relationships that we created earlier, so that's going to cause um, these forms to automatically pick up this relationship. If I close that down, watch what happens here. If I go create, and I'll just do a form from this option, and it'll pick up customers and then tell you what each customer's sold. So if I go next, there's each person uh, in the in the table. So there's only a couple of people in this database. If I do that for products, create form, it creates it the other way around. So now it's showing you the product and then who's bought that product. And again, you've got the navigation at the bottom there for each product. So what I want to do is create those manually. So this is the wizard. And you've got this little format box there, which you can take off. That's all through um, the range stacked and tabular sort of settings have been done by the wizard. So I'm going to create this myself. So I'll just not save this. And I'll, do, I'll just do the customer one. I'm not saving that one. So you create a form. Create form. Form design I'm going into. And I'm just going to make this space a bit bigger. Now you have to tell it what to look at, obviously. So in the property sheet, you've got options here data and then record source where is the data coming from where is the table customers so once you've done that if we go back to form design you'll be able to activate the field list so now there are all the fields so i want to put all of this information onto this form so if i just hold my shift key down and select them all and just drag them into position bearing in mind there's a label coming out this side i have them sitting there like so now, where it needs to be expanded, you can just sit and expand these if there's, uh, if you think it's going to truncate. And in a later video, I'll just talk about concatenation where you can avoid that altogether. So the address and these boxes just need to be made a little bit bigger. Email and things like that can be quite long. Uh, otherwise, they get truncated. So let's have a quick look at that one. So that's just the... the Customers, the table, you see you don't need a big box there. You don't even need the boxes on if you don't want. Go back into design. You know, if I just highlight all of this in properties, go back to properties under format, you can actually play around with actual what's displayed. Here you've got um, different size, grid line types, spacings and all that sort of stuff, border width, hairline border style and if we go into each one of these you've got different options there and then this one is transparent that's because this didn't have any altogether so i've set that to transparent let's have a look what happens now so now you don't actually see the border at all which is how i want it to be honest now when i use the wizard it had the products table as a sub table underneath now to do that manually you need to use these controls. The control I need is the sub form and sub report control. So as you move your mouse across, you get the little indication what each one of these does. So this is the one I want. So I'm going to click on that and it gives me the option to draw. Don't need it to be too big because the product table is not that big. Now it should start the wizard off and the wizard will give me the option to select which table I want to appear as part of the sub form. If you've already got a form, they will be listed there. Well, I haven't. So I'll just go next and then the, I want the products table to be part of this sub form. Bring all the fields across. If you're going to be using this form to input data into both tables, for example, new customer at the top, and then when they buy something, you want to use this sub form, you must bring all the fields across. Otherwise, you'll be leaving blank information. 
now it's asking for a link it's picking up that each each record customer id is the link which is what it says in there database tools which is correct happy with that and then i'm going to leave it like that for now you can change that later on and then just go finish now normally you have to make these a bit bigger so i'm going to do that first and then have a look yeah you see that this it's it's not all fitting there but you can just double click on, on these dividing lines and just bring these back until you can see everything like so so i can see everything so i don't actually need i don't actually need this column no i could get rid of that one but there it is there's the table because that's just the link between these two i could get rid of that one but i'll leave it for now so i'm happy with that i'll just save this form so this is frm customer sales let's say that so it's a form customer sales okay let's go back into design now there's only two people in this database at the minute but i, I do want to have a look a look up so i'm going to create a combo box what's called a combo box which will allow me to search for a customer so i'll just drop it over here and it's then going to ask me which field do i want to use to look up so i'm going to look up um company you've got three options i want the combo box to get the values from another table i will type find a record on the form based on what i select so that's what i want to do so these others are what i covered on the table design same sort of thing but doing it a form if you've done it in the table you won't need to do that on the form because it'll already be there on these fields you'll have the lookup options customer id and things like that next so i want let's go for customer name so that'll be a person's name customer name next and then that shows you that and that's the id key so that's that's what it's going to show and i'm going to be able to select either one of those people and it will go to that record so i'm happy with that and i'll just call this find customer find customer and then finish that let's have a quick look at that one so the drop down list and jones and jones let's just save this form and close it for a minute go to the customer table and let's let's get somebody else let's dave brown um shell to red road still in newcastle any 23 4rt and then i won't bother with the email date joined can be today tab off that record close that table down go back to the form customer sales so now i've got three people go to dave brown dave brown hasn't sold anything or hasn't bought anything so if i go into this table this blank everything's blank if i go back to ann jones or steve saxton he's bought these two things so you've got the table you've got the customer table when you add a new person it will bring the information for that person forward just going to close this form down and create a sales form so that's that one so what i need to do first of all so i can see the sales or create a form to do sales is i need to create a query so i'm just going to create a query design view i'm going to add each of the tables and drop them in like that i'm just going to get rid of that link don't want that link so i've got sales the sales table here in the middle which is like the joining table just move these down so you can see all the fields so i want sales id invoice customer product quantity and date from that and if i run this see what happens here so i've got all the information all the invoice numbers and that's an auto number i will have to type that in and that's a drop down of the people and that's a drop down of the products 
so that's okay so I'll save this call this QRY sales so I know what that one is okay base a I can't call it that I've already got one called QR sales so I have to call it um, invoice sales and then I'm going to close that and create a form based on that so create a form just drop it in like so there's, there's the form and let's have a quick look at this in form view so for each person I've now got a form and ready ready to do a new item if I need to so if I want to do a new sale I basically need to find out what the next invoice number is so at the minute I don't know what the next invoice number is so if I'm going to design on this and two things I'm going to do is get rid of this this sort of stuff arrange remove layout and then that gives you the option to make this a bit wider these all need to come in really miles too big so I highlight them and then just bring them in a bit so I need to do a calculation to work out what the next invoice number is so to do that I need an AB box and the title can be next invoice number and then the formula is equals max open a normal bracket and then square brackets invoice number no space close square brackets close the max max bracket miss the x off and then I want to add one to it plus one and then I need to sort this out because that's in the way so let's pull that across a bit so you just get the little rectangle in the corner or square in the corner so that sees so you can see that so the next invoice number is number five so if I go to the last record four so if I go new so invoice number five because it's just telling me that say Dave Brown and he bought an access course or he bought ten of them let's say ten and today's date like so so now as soon as I tab off that obviously that's still saying five but if I tab off that it now says six because it's gone on to a new record so that's the next invoice number and again you can get rid of these boxes so if I close that down yes I do want to save that yep because and it's a form on this actually so I need to put FRM in front of that okay now the invoice that we did last time if I open that and type invoice number six number five even let's count that up invoice number five there isn't a number six that should pick up that that product we did all the formulas on the report last time so you don't really need to do them at the query level but you can do them at query level and then pull them through into report either way doesn't matter we've got the information there so remember this is a parameter query this invoice is based on a parameter query um, query sales and if I, every time I run it it's asking me for the invoice number and invoice number three it gives you the, the relevant details for that invoice so back to the form so we've got customer sales which just tells you what each person's bought it's just information really and then query invoice sales is giving you a form to actually use to input a sale and because you've got these drop down lists you can just select the people sales ID is an auto number you have to type the invoice in and that would be the next invoice number six so that's all I want to talk about in this little session so hopefully that was of use for you thank you for your time I'll see you in the next one